everyone, Emily Donovan here again, and I am excited to share the final video of this series. I've had a lot of fun putting this together. Um, it's been really rewarding to just think about what I've learned in the last year. Um, the people I've met, the other natural dye enthusiasts, and what I've learned from them, and um, what I look forward to in the next year as we embark on a new growing season and I like to think about what dyes I'd like to explore and incorporate into my work. It is really fun to look back at all the different art that I created and um, the things that I notice um, a change in indigo using something that I made from the plants um, it feels like it's a softer subtler blue and I wonder how each time that it's extracted from the fresh plant material, how it will differ. Um, maybe my methods will get better. Maybe the tones will be different just because when the plant is harvested. But there's lots to explore with indigo still, which is exciting to me. Notice that I really enjoy exploring abstract work, mainly because of this process and the colors of the dyes and the way it is absorbed into the paper. I think it's really look at shapes and tones and colors um, in this format. Birds will always be of interest to me, uh, mainly just from being outside. Um, I'm always wondering why birds behave in a certain way or discovering a new species that I haven't seen before. I also found myself capturing quite a bit of um, urban and rural environments. Um, as I keep thinking about dyes and creating my own materials, I, I, I long for like a larger space and a larger area to grow dye plants. So I guess we'll see if that's in the future. A farm, a natural dye farm with lots of birds and buildings and color and sumac bushes and fields of goldenrod and a place to plant indigo. Oh, and a grove of black walnut trees. Then I think I'm happy. So many possibilities. So thank you everyone for watching my videos and please contact me if you have any questions. Um, I'm happy to explain the process as much as I know about it and help direct you to any other resources that are out there. I also did create an online exhibit of all of these paintings that also list each dye source that is used. Um, it's kind of a nice visual tool that allows you to see what dye plant can create what color. So check it out and um, thanks for watching my videos and thank you to the Minnesota State Arts Board who made this possible, um, Andrea Brissat who also helped film the video, uh, my family and husband who have always been so supportive and for all of you. 